Okay, it's pretty cold here in this garage. I think we've got about 1.6 degrees. Pretty cold, so I've got the fire buzzing away. Sucking up power. But the other problem with power is this thing. This used to have a colossal 10 horsepower motor attached. That's way too much for my garage electricity supply, which is currently on at 20 amps. I'm thinking of upgrading it to 30, maybe 32. Uh, so that I can power the higher settings for that little welder that I've just got. But at the moment I've just got a normal 13 amp plug on it, which is good for the 66 amps or so on the first few settings. But uh, I shan't be using it any more than that, just at the moment. So yeah, uh, I got this a few years ago now, fitted it, uh, made that aluminium first plate kind of a flange adapter thing so that it would fit uh, but it wasn't a groundbreaking success um, with the chuck which I've currently got wrapped up so it doesn't rust itself to silliness uh, it's about 5 inches wide and 18 inches well, 5 inches depth and 18 inches wide and that's just absolutely huge amount of inertia to overcome even when it's geared up to turn around as slowly as possible uh, what used to happen is that it would start off quite alright on the first setting uh, and anything after that it would just trip the fuse so I came up with an idea in that little box up there whereby when you press the button on the left it uh, put some heating elements from an old gas cooker in series with the starting capacitors which you Fine in here, there's one starting capacitor and one non capacitor. Uh, but of course, you know, motors take a, quite a bit of current when they first start up, five or six times their normal running. Uh, I, think, I mean, if this is three kilowatts, it'll take a, well, it's going to be somewhere around about 15 amps, I don't know. Um, so, it's going to take five or six times that when he wants to start up. Uh, even if this is set to its lowest setting, so that's no good. So it's stood there for three years doing nothing. Well, I bought a new motor for three phase and plumbed myself and got a, a, um, a four kilowatt three phase converter as well, which I'll wire up to the garage once I upgrade the. Uh, the wire going from the house to the fuse box because that'll have to go up to 35, 40 amps, something like that. Um, but yeah, that has to come off sometime. But there's quite a big gap between the ground and the motor, and there are two problems. I've got to stop that from dropping on my flaming hand, which would be, well, painful. Uh, so I'm going to try and make a platform. Uh, a few bits of wood there. Nice bit of plywood behind them and some casters. Take about 40 kilograms each, so that'll be alright. That I can roll away, but of course, this bloody damn brake bar gets in the way. So I'm going to see if I can get rid of that for a second or so whilst I fit the new motor and then put it back because they are very important. Um, you start wrapping your hand around the chuck and it full speed and you don't have any hands left to push buttons to stop the motor you have to rely on this to stop it dead uh, it's a mechanical and electrical device fitted on most big lathes uh, this side you can probably see the arm going up and down there that's normally attached to a strap and that strap fits round um, a big collar in there and once it tightens down on that it makes it almost impossible for the motor to turn around it slows it down real quick in fact, it's so quick that I imagine that if this is going at pretty high speed, it will be enough to damage the gears inside there. Uh, so whether it would stop it if it was going very quickly, I don't know. But at low speeds, it would definitely stop pretty quickly. Uh, and of course, the other side of it, you can't see inside that box, there is uh, an electrical switch, which uh, used to be wired to the original box on the back of this uh, headstock. Uh, with that box had some ginormous contactors in there 
which you can imagine is pretty essential for when you're doing 10 horsepower stuff. You know, you've got 7.5 kilowatts going through there. Um, you're going to have some big contactors. So, yeah, and I've got to get this thing off. Uh, but of course, before I do that, I've got to make the platform and the rollers. And before I do that, I've got to take the bar off. So, oh yes, lots of work to do. Um, let's hope it gets a bit warmer. Because the only thing that's warm at the moment is my knee, which is getting very toasty indeed. Gee whiz. So, hmm, work.